Hey, now we're ready to go. You got to turn the red button up. We are ready to go here at field number eight. First pitch in there at 7.17 p.m. Just gave you a great introduction to this game, and nobody heard it because I didn't, didn't turn the microphone up. Okay. Foul ball off to the right side. So I got to turn your volume up too. There we go. Now you can talk, Grant Edwards. <laughs> Max Pacquiao leading off here for the for the Cubs. Eighty-one degrees feels like eighty-three here in Goodlesville, Tennessee. Max takes a swing and comes up empty. Count goes one ball and two strikes. Tim Reese. The Full Count Broadcast Network. I'm joined by Grant Edwards, the vice president of the Goodlesville Little League. It's one of the cities in, actually borders Sumner County, Davidson County. Ground ball down to third. High throw. That'll get over the head of the first baseman. And Pacquiar will head down to second base. As he reaches. Nice stab down there at Third base by Joe Caldwell, but throw just a little bit too high. Cannon Spilka will step to the plate. Shortstop for the Cubs. Cannon, the uh, grandson of head coach Jimmy Neal of the Cubs. Like a breaking pitch in there by Michael Acevedo. Called strike. Game number two of our special edition Little League. That ball gets by the catcher and down to third base goes Pacquiar. Try to set the defense for you here as soon as we can. One ball, one strike. Used to have 30 minutes between games when uh, – Doing college baseball, swing and a miss. We turn them pretty quick here, Tim. <laughs> Fifteen minutes, <laughs> especially during TCAP week. We got to get them home and get them in bed, you know. <laughs> Thanks to Braden Kelly to bring me up a water and a uh, and a hamburger here, but I don't know when I'm going to be able to get to that. <laughs> Foul tipped at the plate. Count remains one two to Cannon Spilka S P I L K A I think it is. Cannon's father, Nick Spilka, I've known for a long time, was a big motorcycle dirt bike rider. I think Cannon piddles in that a little bit himself. The guy's fearless. Swing and a miss that gets off the catcher's glove, but I haven't been around the game in a while. I'm assuming there's no running down to first base on a drop. Drop third strike, right? Drop third strike comes into play at the 11 and 12 uh, age uh, level. At 9 and 10, while we're still learning, drop third, uh, third strike is not in play. So runner at third with one out. Bauer Beachy, the pitcher for the Cubs, stands in. First pitch is high and outside. Home plate umpire is Tyler Robertson. On the bases, Drew Myers for game number two. The lefty Acevedo looks in for the sign, and he has it, and he'll deliver. Swing and a miss. Got in on his fist there. On deck, Harvey Price, the first baseman. So down to third is Joe Caldwell. Jack Ketron at short. Caden Young is at second. That pitch hits high and away. Over at first, Kamani Williams. Behind the plate, Caleb Lansden. Out in left field, Lincoln Curtis. For some reason, I don't have a center fielder on the Braves. Swing and a miss. DJ Kaufman's in center. DJ Kaufman. I just didn't write it down. I'm sure it was on the lineup card. I just didn't. Well, you had all the time it. in the world to prepare yeah. here. I can't imagine you missed it. 2 2 pitch. This is just down. We'll have a full count ministries. Full count. Check out full count ministries or full count rhythm. It's a summer collegiate.
baseball team under the umbrella of Full Count Ministries. Go to either one of those sites. Check out what the ministry is doing for baseball players around. That's going to curve right on around that corner and wink at it on the way by and for a called strike three. It's good enough for Tyler Robertson. Be ready to hit when you step to the plate. This is a hitter's league. Harvey Price, the first baseman, steps it up with. i got some reason this guy is still standing at second base on my scoreboard, but we'll have a courtesy runner for Pacur. It's P-A-C-U-R-A-R? Pacur. Younger brother of Max Pacquiar, or uh, Preston Pacquiar, who's a uh, uh, really good player on the 11 and 12 athletics, coached by Brandon Kaiser. Popped up in the infield, shortstop. Jack Ketron will make the catch. For out number three, no runs, one error. One runner left on base. We are headed to the bottom of the first. Still no score, and the Braves are coming to the plate. I want to tell you about the full count rhythm kids camp, for especially for this age group right here, 9 and 10, right smack dab in the middle of the uh, age group for kids camp. It will be between June 10th and 13th. You're listening in, and you want to support full count ministries. You can also support your grandson, at our baseball camp for youngsters 5 to 12, June 10th through 13th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Won't be here at this Little League Park. It'll be at the park at Drake's Creek in Hendersonville. That's the home field where Full Count Rhythm play their summer games. They'll be entering into the Prospect League for the first time after three years in the Ohio Valley League. Last two champions in that league, the runners-up in the first year, at the rhythm plate, so had a lot of success in the Ohio Valley League, and Prospect League came calling, and God opened the door for the full count rhythm to join the Dubois County Bombers in becoming new members of the Prospect League, and opens up a lot of avenue and a lot of windows for uh, ministry for full count, and that's exactly what ministry is trying to do is to minister to baseball players and their families, friends, acquaintances, to use the game of baseball to tell the greatest story ever told as Josh Carmen, director of baseball and the general manager and head coach of the Full Count Rhythm, often says the greatest story ever told. Worth mentioning, Tim, the uh, registration for the kids camp is open and live now on the website, so if you any of Full Count or Full Count Rhythm social medias uh, or just at the website, you can get there and get the kids signed up for Kids Camp this summer. It is a, uh, as a father of uh, players that have gone through the camp and taken part in it, it's always a great week. They really enjoy it. So uh, I would encourage you to go on and get signed up now. Get a great T-shirt at the end of it. And on that Thursday night, there'll be a home game. I think the uh, – Actually, the rhythm are home every night that week. They have to be because the players are the, uh, instructors. the instructors. So home games Monday through Thursday night. I think that we then go back out on the road. Jack Ketcher in the shortstop who made the catch on that last out on the top of the first steps in. He swings at the first pitch, grounds one right back to the pitcher who steps in throws over to first, and that is Bauer Beachy. Who makes the play? One pitch, one out. That'll make make coach happy when you're keeping an eye on pitch counts. One pitch, one out is always uh, always a good thing. Caden Young, the second baseman, stands in. Beachy to the stretch. Big sigh, and he delivers a pitch high. Michael Acevedo, the Braves pitcher, is standing on deck. Tim, we've been joined by the younger Kelly brother, Ethan Kelly, in the press box, fresh off the field over at Good Pasture. Is that baby Kelly? Also a uh, full count Nicaragua summer team alumni and full count fall league player. Swinging a 
like and a here foul comes tip. Papa Kelly in that, the box. Old man Kelly. <laughs> That's old man Kelly. <laughs> old man Kelly showed up. All right, so which so we had Braden and which one's this? This is Ethan in the box now. Okay. Ethan is our official scorer. Jack Ketron grounded out, and we got a ground ball to second throw over to first. Got a couple ground outs to start the bottom of the first inning. Nice play by the Braves. The Cubs infield, I apologize. It's the Braves at the plate. Michael Acevedo step in. He's left-handed thrower, left-handed batter. He can really swing it, Tim. Been a while since I've seen nine and ten play. These are some thin and little dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Used to college guys. There's a pitch right down the can for strike one. College guys or college girls? I'll do some Vol State softball along with my baseball duties. Did just under 30 basketball games this past year for Athletic Director Bobby Hudson over at Volunteer State Community College. Pop up. That'll get down in the left field. A base hit. He's heading to second. Throw is in time. And the tag applied. Gets Acevedo getting a little greedy. Nice throw to the cutoff man by Seth Ruelas. And the throw to second base. Retires Acevedo for out number three. Acevedo runs really well, but the Cubs executed uh, perfectly on defense there. If not, he's probably getting in there. They would have a runner on with two out, but Caleb Lanston, four-hole hitter, is going to have to wait till next inning. Did get there the first hit of the game, but could not score. We are through one. No score and. We had a three-to-one ball game in uh, game one after one. That's right. Fourteen runs scored in that game. Things will loosen up, I'm sure, as we move along between the Cubs and the Braves. I don't have the uh, records for these teams. You don't happen to have that information, do you? I don't have it offhand. We'll, we'll try to figure that out. Okay. Once again, all that prep time we had before <laughs> this one, we didn't get a chance to dig in. You, you were scrambling <laughs> down there. Trying to collect Trying to line get the uh, lineups and rosters and uh, – I didn't even have a chance to get pronunciations, but I think I cleaned you up on that. Yeah, well, I think you're doing I, a fine job. I think we're okay. We're all right. Full Count Ministries special broadcast. Jimmy Neal will Jimmy Neal will head down to the third base coach's box. Jimmy Neal, former head coach at Beach High School was also the junior varsity coach when my son played at Beach High School. He played with, actually, his son and stepson, Jared Neal, who went on to become the quarterback for UT Martin Skyhawks. And then Taylor Cash, also son of Tammy Neal, also played on the Beach High School squad finished up in 2010. Jared Neal and Tyler Cash moved on and played in 2011. Braylon Auberger will take one in the back. First pitch. That was number 18, Braylon. Up next, number 12, Kyrie. Tim looks Kyrie like Redmond will step in. It's like Ryan Miller, Ryan and Dawn, former oh. host homes for the Full Count Rhythm, checking in. On Facebook here. Ryan Miller now playing for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Is that the Ryan Miller we're talking about? Or no, no you're talking about Burr. okay. You're talking about this is Charlie's dad. Charlie's dad, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the former mustachioed one. I don't know if he's still got the handlebars. He still got the handlebar? I think he may have I think he may have gotten you rid think of that he, from there. But we're rooting for him to bring it back. Really? He's it's very uh recognizable. Tim, it looks like uh, Joey Hill must be listening in because he's reporting that the Braves currently hold a record of two and three, and the Cubs are three and two on the year. 
All righty. Thank you. Appreciate that intel, Joey. A little, little 411 coming in from uh, one of our uh, from the fire our hall. researchers. <laughs> yeah, coming from <laughs> Fire Hall. I think he told me 25. Yeah. Hopefully it's a calm night for those guys. Thin and little dudes. You like that one, huh, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> Some are. I mean, they come in all kinds of sizes, you know, of course. Swing and a miss by Redmond. Tough kids, sissy kids, kids that climb on rocks. Got the Goodlesville Finest running through the uh, Moss Wright Park. Blue lights going. Looks like he might be leading a parade. <laughs> Either that or he's trying to get after the foul ball here soon. He's not in too big a hurry. <laughs> well, there is a speed limit running through Moss Wright Park. Let's get you the uh, – there he goes. Get you the wide view. Oh, called strike on that one. Count. No, it isn't. Oh, my – Clock operators throwing me off. <laughs> There's strike two. Andrew she Kelly. Don't want, she don't want to give me your name. She another is that old man Kelly's wife? That's old man Kelly. That's Andrew uh, Kelly's wife. Oh man. my we gosh. Got the whole See, Kelly if it, clan, they're not they're standing together. Clan. I I don't I can't keep up with all that. It's the Kelly show here. Swing and a miss. Also former host home full count rhythm players. Who'd they host? Elmore, that's Luke right. Luke Elmore from – where was he? Was he middle? No, that was Underwood. Elmore, did he pitch at uh, Catawba or – or Lenore Ryan? There we go. Seth Ruelis, the left fielder, steps in. Folks, if you'd like to host a college player this summer, end of May, probably right around – right after Memorial Day – all the way to the 1st of August. Full Count Ministries and Full Count Rhythm sure could use you uh, this this year. If you're interested in that, I probably could have put an email address up there. But Josh, is it Jay Carmen at uh, – I tell you what, there's probably a place on Full Count Ministries or Full Count Rhythm for you to, to uh, sign up as a host home. Brandon Jaggers would – would love you forever. Looks like we got the we got the Cubs and Braves game going here on the Goldsville Little League page. So for those of you that may have found us in there, welcome. Glad to have you watching tonight. We appreciate Tim Reese of the Full Count Rhythm Broadcast Network coming out and getting the games on the airways tonight. When they start waving all that money here at Goodlesville uh, Little League, <laughs> strike yeah. three called. Runner is going to stay at first base. I mean, it's hard to turn down that Goodlesville Little League money. That's right. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Acevedo. Cheeseburger and water. <laughs> cheeseburger. <laughs> telling you, I just got done doing my tax return. I'm not going to claim that water and that cheeseburger, I'm going to tell you. And I'm <laughs> going to eat it here soon. <laughs> Maybe in an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> Lane Wright, the right fielder, getting some instruction. And down at the other end of the... Diamond, first base coach tying the shoestrings of Braylon Auberger, who was hit on the first pitch of the inning, and he's still standing down at first base. Apparently not a big threat to steal. Swing and a miss. Ball gets away, but not far enough. Caleb Lanston, catcher for the Braves, is... Very attentive. And the pitch. Tap down the right side, down first base line. First baseman Kamani Williams finally sticks a fork in it and makes the play. Steps on first base for the third out here in the top of the second. Three unassisted. So the leadoff hit by pitch does not come back to... Haunt the Braves, and we are through three half innings and still no score. Appreciate you joining us on the Full Count Broadcast Network. We're on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. The majority of you checking us out on Facebook. That's the media of choice for most of the Full Count rhythm folks back years ago. Tim, uh, looks like we got uh, Kelsey Ruelis checking in, voicing her support for the 
for the 9 and 10 Cubs here. Kelsey Rooten. I mean, all caps, let's go, Cubs. She's She's shouting. She is screaming at us. Well, I mean, if you're going to be a fan, you got to be fanatic. Well, here we go. And fanatical. The parade's coming back around again. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, whack. Here comes the popo. (laughs) I saw the chief, Gary Godwin, running, or actually he was walking, but he looked like he had been running. He's the chief of police here in the city of Goodlesville. Retired Metro Nashville police officer. He's also a member of the Long Hollow Church where I attend. Grant Edwards and his lovely family, Ashley, Grady D, Garrett T, and Gunner B. Yeah, all and Grady D. Over there. And the Michael Kelly and Andrea, is that right? Andrea. Andrea Kelly family. Y'all still attend over there from time to time, don't you? Can we see you? Do we see every chance you get whenever the uh, baseball doesn't come calling? We're about to get uh, Michael Kelly on the mic here, and he can serenade He that. can tell us all he knows. <laughs> Is Kelsey Ruelis here at the ballpark also listening? She said, that's my baby. Talking about Seth. Special edition of the Full Count Broadcast Network here. We're at Goodlesville Little League. Do we have the – surely we have the same pitcher. Is yeah, it still, Beachy still out here. Bauer Beach. He's taking a long time to warm up, seems like. Very we working on the clock here? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> we at the four-corner stall already? <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen a 9- and 10-year-old game in a while, but – You know what you got to do, Tim? You get a <laughs> get a run late and you tie every shoe in the dugout. <laughs> I mean, there is some strategery going on around here. Caleb Lanston, the catcher, stands in. He's the cleanup hitter for the Braves. Tim, we've got Eric Stewart of uh, the Eric and Tina Stewart family checking in. Have their older son, Jacob, played through here, and their younger son, Tyler's uh, 11-year-old on the athletics. They're also a uh, rhythm host home. I'll say that name... Sounds familiar. Eric's older son, Jacob, uh, plays on the junior varsity baseball team over at Beach with, with Grady. So they, they played earlier today, and I failed to check to see if they even got the win. Well, you better get on the, get on on the, the hooter team. there. Susan Reese got, uh, got through to me on the back line. And uh, – Said she's listening in. Said sounds good. Said Grant's really showing you up. Yeah, I doubt pitch. that. I appreciate tell her I appreciate the compliment, but I don't believe her. <laughs> she didn't actually say that. I was just making you feel good. On deck, Kamani Williams, the first baseman. Three balls, no strikes to the Braves catcher, Caleb Lansden. Pitch in the dirt, four-pitch walk, puts Landon on base, or Lansden. Don't call me Landon. That would have been good, wouldn't it? Landon, Lansden? (laughs) Hey, I've heard him before. So Kamani Williams stands in with nobody out and a runner on board. See if we see some action on the base paths now. My wife and I are going to be a host family for the first time this year. Swing, and it goes to second base. Throw down is not in time. Great throw by Max Pacquiar. That's a mouthful. That was a hit and run, apparently. Let's get that runner down there to second base. Just a little bit down. A few more players on the roster this year now that the uh, Rhythm are going to the Prospect League. In the last three years, 
we've missed out on being a host home, but we have heard family after family talk about how fun it has been for them to host a collegiate player, and then they follow them in their continued collegiate career. Tim, I can speak. You know, my 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 parents, <laughs> Jim, to, Jimmy and Linda. Jimmy and Linda. They uh they they actually hosted three young men. I was going to say son. they had three, didn't they? Harrison Travis and Trey Miller and Jackson Underwood. And uh, a couple weekends ago, we actually made a trip up to Carson Newman and called a Carson Newman to uh, Catawba game. And oh, you got to see Drew Robertson, Levi Perel, Zeb, Harrison Tra- Zeb Travis, Brown, Harrison Trey. Yeah. Frankie Trey Del- Miller, mm-hmm. Frankie Delgado. So it was great to catch up with those guys um, before this next. And I and uh, I, I believe, well, I know for a fact that Mom and Dad's also planning on hosting a couple young men this summer. John Robertson, umpire in chief, checking out. He feels like everything's under control. The guys on the field are controlling the game at an adequate level. <laughs> And I might have the wrong count here. We're going to find out if I had it wrong. There's a swing and a miss there. Young man stayed at the plate. I think it's a full count ministry. He's full count. That's There's right. Eric, Tyler Eric Stewart Robertson. Them, Eric Stewart and them had Tyler Cruz, he's saying, on the on the broadcast. Oh, the Cruz good. missile. Tyler Cruz falls asleep up in the press box while he's uh, being the clock operator. Full count ministry. He's full count. That's a ball four. The runner at second thinks he's going to get a free pass down to third, but then he realized there wasn't anybody at first. But now, first two have reached on walks. Power Beachy losing a little bit of control. Got the first three out in the first inning. Lincoln Curtis looks at a called strike. He's the left fielder. I left my wife at home today with two grandchildren, four and one years old. She wasn't happy. But my son Wilson came and picked them up. Now she's listening to the Goodlesville Little League on Full Count Broadcast Network. Swing and a miss by Curtis. How many triple plays you seen in nine and ten baseball? Well, I've seen a fair share. It's usually interesting in the manner in which it happens. You <laughs> it's, know? it's not something that uh, Ethan Kelly wants to write in his score sheet, and he just <laughs> writes TP for triple play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're not keeping putouts. Ground ball to the right side. That sneaks through in the right field, and it'll get under the legs of the right fielder, and we're running for days. One run will score. Here comes the second. They're going to wave the runner around. Throw to the plate is not in time. And that is a pre-run Little League home run if I've ever seen one. Framework Athletics first runs of the game for the Braves. Lincoln Curtis with the single and a three base hit. Give, still give him an RBI. Three runs will score for the two and three Braves. It's a home run in his book. I was going to say, Ethan's got the book over there, and it's a home run. <laughs> it's okay by me. I'd, you don't find that on the National Junior College uh, Community College Athletic Association website. Zen Little steps to the plate. Looks at a ball outside. A little excitement there here at field number eight at Moss Wright Park. The Goodlesville Little League, one of the more famous little leagues around the country now. Due to, what is that, the 2012? Do you remember the years? It's 2012 and 2016 2016. To Williamsport. The first year, and Joey Hale was the head coach for both of those. That's correct. And... The common denominator for those two teams for this broadcaster is the Rucker family, Jake Rucker and Carson Rucker, both brothers that are now being play, paid to play baseball. Both both brothers that were also uh, Team Reese Fall League alumni, if I'm that, not mistaken. That's exactly right. Team Reese 
alumni. Jake Rucker was a one-time full count fall league champion. Carson Rucker, a maybe a one-time as well. The reason I know that is because uh, Jake Rucker swing and a miss led Team Reese to a championship one year over Team Edwards. <laughs> we couldn't figure him out. You were undefeated that year, I believe. We had the the Seals, Jonathan Seals, had a good team that year. Yeah, that was uh, 2016 or 17. Time gets away. Well, that had to have been it had to have been 16. That wasn't the one that I showed up late, was it? It was. Was it? Well, then that's 2017. Cuz that there was another significant event that occurred that uh, that day. That was the wedding of my my middle daughter Cassidy. Happened in our side yard, September 30th, 2017. I had to get permission from Miss Susan Reese to uh, leave the wedding teardown scene. And, uh, I mean, all the guests were gone. It's another swing and a miss. And I showed up over at Station Camp High School for the, I think I got there in about the fifth inning. We were winning, but when I got there, you guys must have been coming back. Was that the championship game it you was. played? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tapper at the plate foul. Clayson Kennerson, number 50, is at the plate. Three runs have scored. There's only one out here in the inning. Nobody on base. Clayson's uh, – With a K. We got a double K action here. There needs to be a pitcher. Several, several of the Kennison, Kennerson boys have came through the park here, and uh, his father and mother, Kevin and Cassie, are big supporters of the league, Lending Hand Mortgage. Oh, okay. I've heard of that. Now, does, you said Cassie or Cassidy or one of those. And I wonder, does, surely she spells her name with a K. <laughs> she might. Okay, just, because we've we're, we're got nothing but Ks going here. And unfortunately for Clayson, the K meant strikeout. Or he goes back to the dugout. D.J. Kaufman, the center fielder, stands in with two out and nobody on. Tim Reese and Grant Edwards with you on the Game 2 broadcast. Fouled straight back. So Caleb Lanston led off the inning with a walk. Kamani Williams walked. Then Lincoln Curtis said, come on home, boys. He had a single into Right field turned into a little league home run. But on my really, really stingy score sheet, it's a single and three base error. Swing and a miss. Hockey fans out there know what five hole means. But right between the young man's legs. 0 2 pitch. Coming from Beachy, and he's going to get the backward K in the book. Strikes out the last three batters in the inning after giving up the three runs. Three runs, one hit, one error, nobody left on base. After two innings, three to nothing, the Braves lead. This is a special edition of the Full Count Broadcast Network. We will be broadcasting Full Count Rhythm Games this summer, beginning, I believe, it's Mar or May 28th. But we still are in need of some host families. If you are able to host a college player, they don't eat much. There's a, they actually probably not going to be there a lot. They they play six days a week. Pretty pretty stringent schedule <laughs> on those young men over the summer. And uh, they're due up. They get home late, so you, they need to have an access uh, where they can come in, maybe crawl under a uh, garage door or something like that if – if uh, there's no other door, but <laughs> if you have a, uh, a basement place, maybe a mother-in-law apartment, uh, but uh, yeah, get them uh, get them a place where they can eat, a bed, I mean, a place to uh, sleep. They do need to do laundry from time to time. Let, you get a pitcher though, maybe you won't have to do as much laundry. That's right. That's what I'm hoping on is get get me a pitcher. But uh, you get you a starting pitcher, and he might be around a lot more. That's right. So it's just the luck of the draw, folks. You're uh, we're looking for. Uh, 
followers of Christ that will help mentor these young men. The great thing the, about Full Count Rhythm is each player will get a mentor assigned to them. It'll be a, a, a man that uh, will hopefully love on these kids. Kevin Pomeroy, uh, does he head that up? Does he run the uh, mentorship program, or is that uh, uh, Reed Glover? or Pro Probably Reed or... Kevin, either okay. one. If, you, if you're interested, I promise you can get a hold of us and we can uh, we can get you plugged in. We've got a place you can serve this summer. Host families, if you're a supporter if you, or if you want to support, you haven't got a business out there, you're seeing the uh, scrolling uh, business logos there, uh, Bank of Tennessee right there, John Smithson and, and uh, some other folks there with Bank of Tennessee. You see Jaggers Construction, that's Brandon Jaggers, Chick-fil-A, Rivergate, Todd Hunley. Those are all financial supporters of Full Count uh, Rhythm Baseball. If you would like to become a supporter of Full Count Rhythm, get a hold of uh, the folks at fullcountministries.com or at Full Count Rhythm. We've got brochures that we can get out to you at the different levels of sponsorship. We have a uh, program uh, advertisement, $250 for a quarter-page ad. A uh, 500 for a half-page ad, 1,000 for a full-page ad, and those come with some perks along the way there. Uh, still looking for some other probably specialty sponsors. We can probably come up with a runners at the corners sponsor. We already have, I think, a foul ball sponsor. That's AAA Auto Glass. Uh, and not sure who our uh, call to the bullpen is going to be. We need a strikeout sponsor maybe. Anyway, we'll come up with some specialty sponsors. It's a swing and a miss by is that Bo Erlinson. Tim, I'll tell you what, just uh, just a moment ago, uh, Joyce Allen checked in on Facebook. Ron and Joyce Allen are supporting their grandson, Bo, here. So I know they're watching. Tapper toward the mound. Underhand toss by Acevedo over to first base. Have to figure out. There we go. Kamani Williams, our first baseman, for out number one. Tim, we've had checking into the box here. One of our directors of baseball, Nick Hernandez, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see you, Nick. Looks like he knows his way around Moss Wright Park. He's probably been here a time or six. Pitch in the dirt to Kingston Felton. Don't call him Felton Kingston. He don't like that. Hitting 750 on the season. <laughs> Four foot nine, 85 pounds. Loves broccoli, but only if it's roasted. Don't give him any raw broccoli. Roasted broccoli, maybe pour a little honey over the top of that. Can you tell I'm hungry, Grant? <laughs> It's cheeseburgers calling my name over here. You got a cheeseburger going down there. <laughs> I can't stop talking long enough to eat it, though. I need Marty Brenneman to come in and take the uh, the middle two innings or something. Give Joe Nuxhall a break. The pitch high and away. Count goes two balls and two strikes to Kingston Felton with Paul Vergamini on deck. Got to practice that one. Common spelling of Vergamini. There is a called strike three. We're out number two. Notice Andrea is not going with the uh, last names here. She is not trying to figure out Vergamini. She's eating this hamburger. She can do it. Tim, we've got uh, Tyler Cruz checked in a moment ago, and he is challenging <laughs> you saying that he's yeah. falling asleep keeping the score. You know, I didn't actually uh, – that wasn't the truth. He wasn't actually falling asleep. He was FaceTiming with his girlfriend, but I wasn't going to tell everybody that. I tried to use something else, but if he's going to come on Facebook and he wants to he wants to get uh, get the truth out there, we can do that. Cruz pitching for the Mo Mobile Rams. What did I call them? The Bears. I called them the University of Mobile Bears. That was wrong. 
Oh, Tyler. Who came up with that? We had a question earlier. Is it? O2 pitch. Couldn't have missed much. 2 1 pitch. That's, that's close. O2. Acevedo. I can't see the uh, scoreboard. And once again, I got I got 3 1 on mine, but I think he did just say 2 2. So Andrea wins this one, and I think I just walked him. Now it's a full count. Now we got a full count. We're just going to keep hitting buttons. Until we get it right. Full count, two outs, and nobody on base. That's right, full count ministries. Todd Neal's checked in. He wants to know how many championships Team Reese has won. Strike three called as my man Vergamini was stepping out of the way from that one. Didn't want to get hit in the kneecap, but instead he's going to go down looking on a one, two, three inning as Acevedo has retired the last Six batters he's faced. So let's get Todd Neal. I haven't seen him forever. The big time supporter of full count rhythm. So was thinking that we heard from Vicky Neal. Is that your mom, Todd? I think Vicky. We heard from Victoria Neal. That was that was earlier. Kingston's. That was relative. That right. was checking in. That was uh, Kingston Johnson's. Mother, I thought he said. Looks like Tyler so. Cruz is thinking better of challenging you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I keep. guess I won't challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Tyler Cruz, he stayed with uh, your dad? Tyler Cruz was with the Stewart family here. Oh, okay, Stewart. there we go. Okay. And matter of fact, Tyler Cruz uh, with uh, Tyler Stewart playing ball here last summer. Tyler Cruz made several trips out here to Moss Wright Park himself, park himself on – Days off when he had the opportunity, he came in and took a few ball games in here at Moss Wright Park last summer. We well, he also was one of about a dozen players from Full Count Rhythm that went on a mission down in Nicaragua, didn't he? He did, and I was actually had the pleasure of going on the trip with Tyler and, and his dad. His was dad. his dad Jeff, a uh, pastor down at First Baptist Church, Lexington, Alabama? That's right. Does that sound right? Tyler okay. is. Uh, you know, as a, as a college pitcher, he relished uh, several opportunities to get some at-bats down in Nicaragua. Oh, my goodness. You know he got he got stoked for that. He hadn't had an at-bat in college probably in his life, has he? Uh, well, I'd have to go back and check the score. He might. Here. Yes. <laughs> check the uh, mobile, mobile Ram score sheet, left-handed pitcher. I saw that Nick Judd pitched against the uh, Treveca – Trojans the other day came in and either got the win or got the save. I was looking at the box score actually just this morning, former rhythm player. Beachy Mack on the mound for the bottom half of the third here. Five years, he says, since his last U.S. at bat. <laughs> Would you get, did you go eight for eight for uh, – 12 down there, Tyler. Did you get you get you a long ball? I'll confirm he hit the baseball. He did it. He hit he he swung hard just in case he hit it. That's right. That's my motto. All right, let's get back to calling some baseball here. We're in the third inning. Bottom of the third. Braves with a three to nothing lead. Will McMurray from the left side. Looks at ball one. You know, we're broadcasting here because we have the equipment and we just like to talk about baseball. That's right. So I tell my play-by-play -play man for full count rhythm when we get ready to turn the, the button and say, let's go live. We're just going to talk some baseball. Tim, I'll tell you what. Joey jo Hill, Joey Hill just said. with the stat sheets for the 9 and 10 Braves and the uh, 9 and 10 Cubs. So. I'm telling you, man. I know he's killing – he's dying not being here. He has got to be because I think he is a lot like me. He's got FOMO. My wife would tell you that the old fear of missing out. If there's something going on, I want to be there. 
and she'll tell you I love me some baseball. My little grandson, he comes over to the house, and he says, Grandpa, I got bad news for you. We're not watching any baseball. We're watching kids' shows. <laughs> so every once in a while, i got to tell little Eli, Eli, I got bad news for you, buddy. We're watching baseball. 3-0 pitch in there for a called strike. McMurray big, thought he's got the free Will pass. Big Will thought there. he had him a free pass there. And Tyler Robertson, our home plate umpire, says, come on back for a 3-1 pitch here. Rex Reigns is on deck. Let's see what Beachy's got. He's got – he's deliberate out there. And there's a called strike on the outside corner. Do have an hour and 30-minute time limit here. Got started at right around 7.17 on my watch. So we are coming up about 45 minutes right now. Full count ministries, full count. Beachy delivers. That's strike in three. there for a called strike. He has struck out the last four he's faced. Rex Reigns will stand in. <laughs> Thank you, Joey Hale, Hale for the stats. I'll let you dive into those strength. Swing and a miss. Big cut there by number 45, Rex Reigns. Wonder if they call him Rock after Tim Raines. R A I N E S is how you spell Rex's last name. Tim Raines, a former Chicago White Sox player, they called Rock Raines. And a swing and a miss. Ball in the inner half there. He, <laughs> he liked it. He was maybe swinging to keep it off of him. The old hit it before it hits you ball. That's right. Vicky is my mom, Todd Neal says. Carrot cake. I, I, I think of her and I think carrot cake. Either she makes a good carrot cake or she made some carrot cake. I'm not a carrot cake lover as that ball's fouled down to third baseline. But I'm telling you, we have had some great, great food brought up to the press box at Drake's Creek Park, delivered by fans of the – Broadcast. That one's just a little bit outside. Count goes one ball, two strikes, one out. Slow moving bottom of the third here. Bauer Beachy very deliberate out there on the mound. Somebody must have told him, hey, let's take your time. Problem is you're down by three, Cubs. You've got to roll it along here at the 40 pitch mark. Delivery is pitch number 41. That's down. We've had cookies. We had a pound cake delivered to the press box. I believe you've had some of uh, Linda Edwards' sourdough bread delivered to you. Yeah. Oh, I, you delivered it. Absolutely. Um, and Grand Nora down in Starkville, Mississippi, brought us what I would call brookies. Swing and a miss. Down goes Reigns. Strikeout number five. He went down with a cut there, though. Joe Caldwell, the third baseman, steps in. He is the 12th batter for the Braves. Got three runs in the second. Right now, that's standing up. If you bring food to the press box or have it delivered up there, you're going to get mentioned on the broadcast. There, isn't it? chance that you won't. Swing and a miss. Did I miss it? Is it 1-1? One, one? Am I missing? Okay. Let me get that corrected as I'm checking out Facebook. Jessica Vergamini is checked in on Facebook. Swing and a miss on a slider outside. Was that a slider or did the pitch just slide <laughs> outside? 
Uh, I don't know. It had a little cut to it. Maybe it was a cut fastball. Paul's mom can watch while the little brother is sleeping. But I, are they at the ballpark, though? Or are they at home? Ball and two strikes. Swing and a miss. And Beachy strikes out the side here in the bottom of the third. And he needs to get his club into the dugout. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We are through three. And the three runs in the second are all that have come across as the Cubs will come to the plate looking to get the stick, sticks going. They'll have 12, 1, and 2 to come to the plate. Again, thank you for joining us on this special edition of Full Count Broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We're broadcasting here at the Goodlesville Little League in Goodlesville, Tennessee. I talked to a guy, the father of a beach player that my son played so they moved up here from Miami, and he just looked on the map and found a place called Goodlesville, and he said it's got to be a good place to live. It's that's named right. Goodlesville. That's right. And that's why he moved to Goodlesville from Miami. Well, Pedro Roman. Seems like a reasonable way to <laughs> choose a. Right. It's a nice, <laughs> nice, lovely town. Goodlesville Little League has been to the Little League World Series twice, won the entire championship in 2012 i think we determined right that's right that's the bronc myers jake rucker which seals was that that was there was it uh i believe it was jonathan he made jonathan the next probably team. so uh ryan lyle's on that team jason brown is that jason brown kippy brown's son um blake I osborne i believe yeah you, you you knew more names than i knew uh, fire them off, and uh, they won. Brock Myers hit, what, five home runs, I think. In that. He hit a bunch of them. I don't <laughs> yeah, remember. He, he made a name for himself now, uh, or, or back then. Ran into him at Lipscomb University. He was working for, I think, perfect game at the time. He's doing something else now, but the son of Kurt and Amy Myers. But Brock played at Tennessee Tech. Jake Rucker, of course, played at University of Tennessee, and is now playing at Wichita Wind Surge in the Twins organization, a double-A team in Wichita. And his brother Carson, who was on the 2016 team that went up to Williamsport, he was the fourth-round draft pick of the Detroit Tigers this past year, and he's playing currently on the Florida uh, – what do they call that? The F – SL, Florida Summer League maybe or Florida something league. But he hadn't, hadn't been uh, assigned yet to single A in, I think that's Lakeland. This is where their spring training site is down in Florida. But expecting big things. Former Good Pasture Cougar is Carson. Acevedo with 40, 40 pitches so far. Our Beachy is at 46 as that first pitch is fouled off by Jackson Butler. So we start the top of the fourth inning. Jackson Butler looks like two hits on the season so far. Okay. And, and seven at bats. They sneaking him in down there at that 12 hole. That's right. Just getting back to the top. Ooh, he started to go but held up. Good. Good eye there by Jackson with an X, Jackson, J-A-X-T-O-N, Butler common spelling. Old man Butler's boy. That's right. Have no idea who he is. Back to the top of the lineup on deck, Max Pacure. I can't get that one. You got it. That's that right? You got it. I mean, one and two is. You'll also find the. Uh, Go oh. ball to the first baseman. Makes the catch. Kamani Williams. Pack or the first out. Coming up here. Lead, leads the Cubs in hitting. In the leadoff spot. You'll also find the Pack UR family at Long Hollow most Sundays. Is we that right? There. Yeah. They don't have a kid down in the uh, preschool area, do they? No, they're up in the. They got some older. Uh, yeah. Is this the younger? This is the younger. Max is the LK last kid. Popped up into the middle 
of the field, second baseman, Caden Young, I assume, is still the second baseman. He was there at the start of the game, and he makes the catch. Man, they got numbers on the front of their jerseys. That is Caden Young. Can't hide money here, the Braves. They got it. So the first two retired. As Cannon Spilka comes to the plate. He struck out in the first. So both pitchers right at 46 pitches. Acevedo, plenty to work with. Can go up to 75. That'll catch the inside corner for a called strike. It's Tim Reese on the Full Count Broadcast Network. I'm joined by Grant Edwards, one of the original seven of the Full Count Ministry. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, Grant. Oh, no, you're right. All right, Nathan Davenport. We're going to see if I can name all seven. Nathan Davenport, Jeff Parsons, John Smithson, Jacob Oldham, Grant Edwards, that's five. Ryan McDuffie, six. And Brandon Jaggers, seven. Nailed it. Is that right? Okay. Your preparedness is uh, it's un unmatched. All of a sudden, there was a synapse that uh, that came together, and I, I had a memory. Oh, Candace Milka looking Spilka. to get two out of the walk. <laughs> Acevedo you, making you, you sure he's be, You better be paying attention, right? Yeah, that's right. So, first walk of the game by... Michael Acevedo. Two outs brings up his opposing number. The pitcher, Bauer Beachy, looks at one. It whispers at the outside corner as it went by. These late games, that uh, in this 9-10 group, we may, it may get extended from time to time just a hair. Fouled back. So we're not uh, militant on our timekeeping. We'll stay on track. Ground ball to third. That gets by and in the left field. Stop made by Lincoln Curtis out there. Good play to hold the guy at yes. second there. Cannon Spilka runs really well. That would have, if it gets loose at all, that would have been a run. That's the first hit of the game for the Cubs. Brought to you by Bauer Beachy. Joe Caldwell might could have made a play on that, but hit pretty hard. These guys are nine and ten. Harvey Price steps to the plate, first baseman, popped out to the shortstop in the first. See if the Cubs can get some two-out magic here in the top of the fourth inning. Getting shut out right now. As the pitch goes, looks like right down the middle. Throw down to third base is not going to be in time as the ball got away from the catcher. Base hit certainly do some damage now. Pitch looked like a pretty good pitch, but not called a strike that I saw. And it's not showing up on the Toyota of Gallatin scoreboard. <laughs> if you'd like to donate a whole bunch of money to the uh, Goatsville Little League and get brand new scoreboards, these folks up here would really appreciate it, just like Toyota of Gallatin did over at Pioneer Field at the Tim Garrett Baseball Complex in at Volunteer State Community College. Eric Carr, the general manager, and Jake Thompson, Facebook fame at Toyota of Gallatin. He's a general sales manager. That, path, that pitch sails by the catcher, and there's going to be a first run of the game for the Cubs. The Framework Athletics first run of the game on the wild pitch. So the two-out magic. We're going to have a courtesy runner for our pitcher. 
So we run for pitchers and catchers. RB Price. So we're going to have, have a little con flab out on the mound. All right. I don't have the – there we go. Is that Justin Curtis, the head coach for the Braves? If not, I just made him the head coach. I don't believe that's Justin. No? That looks more like it may be Ketron, the assistant coach. Okay. Jeff Ketron. Jack Ketron's dad. Is it Jeff? We're just making stuff up. Going to have a, an intentional walk to Harvey Price, because it which would have been uh, ball four here. So we just go ahead and put ball four up there and put runners at the corners. So is that you want to get back on the? There we go. Explain what happened there, Grant. Well, it looked like we had a – what was the count? It was a 3-0 three three count. 3-0 count, mm -hmm. so they went ahead and chose to intentionally walk the batter, and okay. that'll add a pitch to the pitch count for Acevedo and on to the next guy. All right, so runners at the corners. Brought to you by Pizza Ranch. They're back open, I understand. Are they? Are they? Not sure if they are. They got blown up in that tornado. I've been by there a couple times to see if Pizza Ranch was open. I'm telling you, I've been over there about three or four times. They've got great food. Pizza, chicken. Yes, the to be a pizza gonna... joint, some, some of the better fried chicken you'll find. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Stolen base for Price. Now, the tying run is on its second base. Two outs to Braylon Auberger. He was hit by a pitch. Nice stop by Caleb Lansden to keep the runner at third. Auberger was hit by a pitch as the leadoff batter in the second, but he had uh, looked like somebody nailed his foot down there at first base. He did not move off that bag. Next two batters struck out, and the ground out ended the inning. Auberger. Slow pitch driving to right down. field. That's going to get down. It's going to score at least one, and they're going to wave the other runner around, and this game is tied on the bloop. Base hit over the first baseman's head. Hallberger's fourth hit on the year, and that was a big one. Ties this one up. Two RBIs. How many two-out hits does he have on the season? <laughs> well, I'm going to have to dig into the stat sheet here to give you that. Joey. We had to get Joey. <laughs> Our stat man on that. Joey Hale. We need to make sure there are no fires or no emergencies uh, in his sector. Square around a bunt is Kyrie Redman. Strike on the attempted bunt. So two hits in the inning to go with two walks and three runs have scored. The Braves and the Cubs are all tied up. Swing and a miss. Ball popped out of Lanson's glove, but Allberger does not advance. Redman down in the count, no balls and two strikes. 62 pitches now for Michael Acevedo. Nice pick. Throw down to second base. Throw is just a little offline, and there's going to be a stolen base. Allberger with the base hit into right field. It drove in Beachy, or the pinch runner, the courtesy runner for Beachy. It didn't. Catch the number for who that was, and Harvey Price. Now another runner in scoring position. Pop up to the right side. This could end the inning. First baseman and second baseman converge, but I believe that Kamani Williams makes the grab for out number three. Good inning for the Cubs there, Timmy. Three runs on two hits. No errors, one runner left on base. We are headed to the bottom of the fourth now, all tied up between the Cubs and the Braves, playing down at, what do they call that park down in the Atlanta? What is that? The Truist, Truist park, park now. <laughs> We're not at Wrigley tonight, folks. We are at Truist Park here at field number eight. The Braves, that's the old 
Harry Carey versus Skip Carey slash Chip Carey. <laughs> Should we give a shout out? I actually cannot see the uh, the patrons in front of the press box here out of field eight as well. I'm kind of sitting down. So Tim, we just I had, probably uh, know some people that are sitting out there. Just had another former Goldsfield Little League alumni, Jackson Cawthron. Check in. He's the official book over on field five tonight. He's all. He's a. He's a team Edwards, full count fall leaguer. Jack Jackson Cothran, not the catcher from no. Ohio. I was going to say not the catcher from Seagull High School. The the same right, name. The right fielder from Beach. Yeah, same name. And uh, wow. the former former Goldsville little leaguer here. He's up back up here official book keeping and okay. Uh, uh, looking forward to get. Getting Jackie back to Team Edwards Fall League for this upcoming fall season for the Old Hickory Bat Full Count Fall League for the high school players. Yeah, we do have that. Most folks uh, listening in probably know that, but another piece of Full Count Ministries is the Full Count Fall League, a high school fall league that play at Drake's Creek Field 3, Field 2, Drake's Creek uh, City Park as well as at Station Camp High School and Beach High School. What do we have, 14 teams in the league this last I year? I mean, up uh, about 200 players. and Just north of 200 and, players. And, uh, about, about 38 schools represented, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. It's a wood bat league and been very successful. Since 2013, that league has been playing. So 10, I think we just had, was that our 11th year that we just had? Sounds about right. Like I said, time gets away from me a little bit. <laughs> I see you trying to take your shoes off to count all that, but uh, you don't have to. It's not It's not going to go in anybody's book. Lay down, bunt, beautiful. Throw down to first base is not going to be in time to get the leadoff batter, Jack Ketron. Jack Ketron with a nice bunt there. The Braves playing a little small ball here. Get them on, get them over, and get them in. Jimmy Neal discussing that call with – Drew Myers out in the field, but to no avail. Jack stays at first. So Bauer Beachy with 47 pitches. He has got plenty of room left. That's the third hit of the game for the Braves. Caden Young, second baseman, stands in. Another Bye. bunt. Out one. for the catcher, nice. Throw is apparently caught and secured in the glove. Looked like it might have been laying there on the ground, but Harvey Price kept his glove down there. A sack bunt. It's the runner over to second base. Pretty sure he was not sacrificing there, but we've got to make sure that uh, the scorebook keeper knows that that's a sack bunt and it's not a nat bat for the young man. He's out two to three. She's looking at me like, what are you talking about? That ball gets away. They will not be able to advance on that. It's, she's handling it all now. I mean, she, what, why did he leave you? you? You are spinning plates now. I think that was a ball, was it not? It was yes. a ball. Okay. Catch, was that Ketron at we second? Got, Tried to advance. Yeah, Ketron's at second. Acevedo up here is leading the Braves, hitting 667 on the season. So well, he got to add another one to it. He had a base hit in the first inning, but got a little greedy. Yeah, that's and right. was thrown it. out at second base. That same ball Trying right here might be a run. Into double. Oh, yeah. And that base hit dumped right over third baseman's head. I don't know, maybe the uh, just bunt, 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 make them make plays. But right now, Beachy's having trouble throwing strikes to Michael Acevedo. On deck, Caleb Lanston. He may want to throw around Acevedo a little bit here. He's had a pretty, big, pretty hot bat. What did you say, 670? Yeah, 670. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a that's a work around. You had a base open there, young man. That's right. He's watching some veteran move. By yeah, Jimmy there. Jimmy Neal down there. <laughs> He's been around baseball a few years. Third walk of the game for Bauer Beachy. 
Jimmy Neal out giving instruction to his defense, making sure everyone knows to go where with the ball if it's hit to him. That is a pretty key uh, piece of uh, information that every player needs to have in their mind. If the ball comes to me, what do I need to do with it? That doesn't change all the way through professional baseball. That's right. Caleb Lanson walked and scored in the second. He was the rally starter for the Braves. Back-to-back -back walks and then a single by Lincoln Curtis. And it was Ali Ali oxen free. Everybody come home. <laughs> Is that, a, is that a southern expression at all? Because I grew up up north, up in Cincinnati, and we used to say, "Nolly, ollie, oxen free in some kind of a game. I don't remember what it was. Kick the can or something. 1-1 one, one pitch. That's going to get in there for a called strike. Tyler Robertson, our home plate umpire, with the demonstrative call behind the plate. When he's not working uh, games here in Goodlesville Little League, he's working in AAA in the Pacific Coast League. <laughs> Just kidding. have no idea. Just making it up, folks. Entertaining. Count remains one ball, two strikes. Clay Williams, who uh, was a former Goodlesville Little League player, along with his twin brother Cole, I believe, twin sons of Stan Williams, he is now a double-A umpire. Not sure if he's in the Southern League or the Texas League. His brother, his brother Brock still umpires down here. Is that right? That's okay. okay. Yeah, Clay, uh, Clay came down uh, a few years ago, I believe, during the uh, 2020 COVID when minor league baseball got canceled. He came down and did a, a, a few five and six game for us and didn't know where to stand. <laughs> he, different, different brand of umpiring than he was used to. Clay did a couple of Vol State Pioneer games this uh, spring before he headed down to, uh, I think he was going to Fort Myers, the Twins spring training. Popped up, that will get off the screen to the left side. Young Caleb Lanson is uh, fouling off a lot of pitches from Bauer Beachy, raising the pitch count up. He's now at 58 for the contest. Can only go up to 75 in game one of today's doubleheader that we carried here on the Full Count Broadcast Network. Both of the starting pitchers went to and exceeded by only one batter. Is a nice stab there. Keep runners at first and second. By Max Pacuar. 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 You had it, then you Pacuar. lost it. Pacuar. Jaguar. Pacuar. Is that it? Do That's I have it? it? You're on it. Jaguar. 2-2 two, two count, at least on my scoreboard. It's a big telephone pole or a big light pole that's right in my way. I need to move that scoreboard just a hair to the right. You know what? We actually could move me a little bit to the right. <laughs> It'd be, probably be easier than moving that big light pole. We have a full count. Ministry's full count. We don't get here very often in 10U baseball. Thanks for joining us on the Vol State. The Vol State. I knew I was going to do that. On the Full Count Broadcast Network, and now the bases are juiced. Still only one out on the sacrifice bunt laid down by Caden Young. Curtis coming up here, right? Kamani Williams is who I have. What, uh, yep, did this Kamani. Did I miss somebody? No. Nope. nope, you're right. I don't think so. Only got one out out there, right? Get my oh, Kamani just oh yeah, it's Lance. It is Kamani Williams. Yep. That big two four on the back of it, but half of the two fours tucked into those pants. Shirt might be a little bit big for him, but the Williams <laughs> name on the back of it, huge lettering, but thank goodness I've got my uh Bushnell uh 10 by 32s up here, my binos. These old eyes need some help from time to time. We are set to go with the bases loaded. One out, tie ball game. 
Monty Williams walked and scored ahead of the Little League home run by Lincoln Curtis. Bauer Beachy struggling to get the ball over the plate. Gave up an infield single or bunt single to Jack Ketron. He was sack bunted over by Caden Young and then back-to-back -back walks to Acevedo and Lansden. That's going to be a called strike as Williams backs out of that inside heater from Bauer Beachy. If you've noticed a pattern here, Tim, if you can throw in the inner half, you'll do really <laughs> well in this league. I think you, they call it the river, the uh, batter's box line on either end between the batter's box and home plate, the edge of the plate. That's called the river in umpire. There's a line drive over the head of the shortstop. That's going to score one. Looks like they're going to wave around the runner. Throw to the plate is high, but not in time. Two runs come in on the single by Kamani Williams. Big hit there for Kamani. Give him two RBIs. And the Braves lead five to three. Had the three to nothing lead. And then the Cubs came back to tie the score. Braves now take back that lead. And runners now at second and third. Still one out. Lincoln Curtis steps to the plate. It's two hits in the inning. One a bunt single and now. Curtis with a big hit the first time through that drove in the three runs. That's going to be just a hair inside. Curtis dumped one over the first baseman's head, Harvey Price. Right fielder's got him shaded a little bit towards center, huh? Actually, Curtis, is that wasn't the dump. That was the, uh, well, that was the ground hard ball. ground ball past the uh, second baseman, wasn't it? Yep. And he tried to go oppo there, swung and missed. If he can hit that same ball again, he'll run a long ways. His right field is wide open. <laughs> he's, he's playing him to, play, uh, to, to uh, hit it up the middle, isn't he? That's right. He's over in right center field. He must have read his scouting report. <laughs> The start of the game, that was Lane Wright. Not sure if it still is. A swing and a miss pops out of Pacuar's glove, but nobody can advance. Count goes one ball, two strikes, one out. Runners at second and third. Goodlesville Little League, 10-U ball game here in the mid middle of the regular season or maybe about a third of the way through. Braves come in with a 2-3 and three record, and the Cubs... Three and two. Braves looking to even that draw out. even to the Cubs. Just missed with that pitch. Beachy now seven pitches away from the 75 pitch limit. Got through into the fourth inning. But he only has one out. Lincoln Curtis, the left fielder, looks at ball three. Well, the full count ministries, full count. Go to fullcountministries.com. Find out all that the ministry is doing for baseball players, not only here in Middle Tennessee, Sumner County, also down in the Birmingham area. Just had our first Alabama full count fall league. And then also in Nicaragua. Swing and a miss. Beachy gets Curtis down on strikes. Big out there for Beachy. Now two outs in the inning. This is a seventh strikeout for Bauer Beachy. B E A C H Y. My wife is kind of Beachy. She's <laughs> that means she likes the beach. I don't I mean that she's you know she's that. a crabby. She's not <laughs> she's not that kind of a Beachy. She's she likes sand between her toes. Ooh. High, hit it high, let it fly. Says Zen Little, the right fielder, draws contact there. Try to keep this a PG show here. Try not to get the R-rated, kick get kicked off of YouTube. Me fired from full count broadcast. Oh, There's a drive hit. out to right field. That's gonna clear the bases and roll 
Past the right fielder. Zen Little, he's not going to stop at second. He's going to head to third and slide just a little past the base, but he's in there safely. He picks up two RBIs on the triple. And the Braves lead 7-3. They like going the opposite way here. That's right. Picks up a couple ribbies. He's now one for two. Been effective. Clayson Kennerson steps in. Ooh, and he thought he'd, he'd go and do the same action. Swing at a high pitch. That's exactly what Zen Little did at the start of his A.B. Grant, you've been with me before on Full Count Rhythm broadcasts. A little yes, bit sir. different uh, broadcast in Little League games, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but uh, it's been, been a fun night. I think the maybe the last time I was with you was up at Paducah. I was going to say, uh, when, I, when I think of that press box, I think of Grant Edwards being up there Paducah several Chiefs. times. Yeah. One of the best press boxes, especially a road press box. Great Swing field. and a miss. Great facility up in Paducah. Doc Heidig Field, the Brooks Stadium in Paducah, Kentucky. Clayson Kennerson struck out in his first at bat, looking to pick up another two out RBI. Ooh, he drives man. one in the left field. He's going to pick it up with a base knock. Throw into second base, keeps Kennerson at first. And the Braves lead eight to three. We could probably call that a uh, lending hand mortgage RBI single. Well, let's do it. Is it lending, L-E-N-D-I-N-G? Yeah, lending Lend hand mortgage. Okay. Clayson's father, Kevin, is uh, the lending hand mortgage guy, big supporter of Goldsville baseball, always has been. Their family has been for quite a few years. That will end the evening for Bauer Beachy. As he threw his 76 pitch there. So we have a new pitcher. Figure out who that is. At first base, I think. You can talk out loud. Oh, Harvey, Price. Harvey Price. I don't mind background noise from lady who's working like a mad woman up here. She's the public address announcer. She's keeping the scoreboard. Andrea Kelly is also keeping... The pitch score count. book and the pitch count out underneath the scoreboard. Does your husband do anything around this this park at all? Oh, wait a minute. That's him that just showed up. What have you been doing? You been getting a foot rub or something? What how come you're leaving your wife to sit right here and do all this, huh? You had to go somebody needs to eat this concession food, is that what you're saying? Here, here's one. <laughs> I need a hot one. <laughs> Here's a here's a cheeseburger. Uh, I have to get it at the end of the game. I'm I, I can't eat while I'm doing commercials <laughs> and calling the game. And although I have really appreciated my man Grant Edwards uh, helping helping a brother out here, it's been uh, been a lot of fun. It's been I, a fun night, yeah. Yeah, I I sure enjoy. I hope the uh, uh, doing uh, it. The uh, rhythm followers and the full count followers have enjoyed. Uh, a step back in time, watching the, the younger younger kids play, and uh, the folks that uh, I think it was shared to the Goldsville Little League baseball page too. So I hope those families have enjoyed enjoyed watching tonight. Hopefully, we'll be able to do this more in the future. Did we just have a um, a uh, we had a group? I know we had a group down in Nicaragua this past week. That's right. Are they back? Is uh, Reed Glover and his uh, what four or five guys? Doug Dorn and. They Maybe be it was uh, five of them, I think. Yeah. Did they come back today? Uh, I believe they would have come back Sunday, but I, I have oh. bad on me. I've not okay. checked Okay, Maybe, in, maybe yeah. so. But, but it uh, sounded like I got a few updates from, from, from Reed while they were down there. It sounded like it was a fantastic week and uh, uh, more of a discipleship-centered trip and uh, training leaders uh, in the Nicaraguan uh, – Nueva Segovia and Mazante area to go out to their communities. and Well, let's mention our Nicaraguan uh, missionaries. Uh, Alex Montiel's been with the uh, ministry 
right on cue. Longest, right? Alex Montiel, right on cue, checks in. Alex, good to good to hear from you, my o- friend. Olaf, Olaf, Alex, Olaf, I believe is uh, Spanish for hello, isn't it? Either that or snowman. I'm not sure. <laughs> One of those. Hola, amigos. Chicle, chicle, chicle for Alex Montiel. He loves the bubble gum down there. He's not much on the dum dums, but uh, he loves him some bubble gum. He just doesn't chew it long enough. He'll chew it for like, you know, six, seven minutes, and then he's throwing it out. He wants another piece. Hot Rubio, also full count missionary down in Okata. Popped up first pitch from Harvey Price. That's all. That's how it's done. That's what he's going to He's going to go in the dugout. He's going to tell the guys, hey, it's, I'm a one-pitch guy, okay? Not only am I going to throw one pitch, they're going to hit it to me. I'm going to catch it, and we're going to come in, and we're going to try to score some runs. But first, the Braves with two, three, four, five runs in the fourth inning on one, two, three, four hits, no errors, one runner left on base. The Braves now with an eight to three lead over the Cubbies who are coming to the plate. Alex Montiel, Heidel Rubio. We got Wilmer Lopez. Is that Wilmer's last name? Lopez down there. All right, now you're going to have to help me with uh, we got we got David? Uh, oh, I forget. How did Zeldon? I forget? David. Francisco David Zeladon. We've got, it, uh, I'm thinking Honduras. Do we still have uh, Mario? Somebody? Mario's Mario. Mario's doing great work over in Honduras, and then we've got uh, Arsenio Ponce. Okay, uh, doing work in the uh, Macaliso up in the uh, up in a, a little more of a remote area up there in Nicaragua. And That's not at Las Mesas, though. Right? Yeah, up in that area. Okay, yeah, up in that area. The tables. We've got. Uh, it's Nathan Davenport territory up there. Nathan Davenport. Norvin. Travis Smith. Norvin's Norvin, on. Norvin is he's recently, on the uh, payroll now? Norvin recently came on staff. Okay. Out of, uh, Norbin. Totagalpa, Tota who's been <laughs> a uh, longtime uh, baseball player and discipleship leader. His and, life's changed a little bit, hasn't it? Uh, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. That's life change, folks. Uh, came at baseball, and and uh, God can change lives, and there was there's one of them for sure. But he was a he was a guy that we met uh, one on one on our first trips to uh, Totagalpa and played and uh, as you mentioned uh, life was impacted and changed and he is certainly uh, um, passionate about uh, discipleship making amongst the baseball community in his area. Well, that's awesome. We move to the top of the fifth inning. Michael Acevedo. There's been. There's a lot of time in between innings for uh, a, a time limit game in this. I'm, I'm kind of understanding. We 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 had played three or four uh, minutes of uh, commercials here, <laughs> but uh, instead we're just talking full count. And Alex Montiel. It's hurry up and get started, and then wait. <laughs> and then let's hurry up and wait. <laughs> Seth Ruelas, Lane Wright, and Bo Erlinson do up for the Cubs. See how many batters that Acevedo can face with now 65 pitches. He's got 10 left. So he pours one in right over the plate. Ruelas struck out in the second, stands in there. And he, oh, he nearly was, offered it that he one was trying not, to get out of the way. He, as my, my uh, son and I would say, he was the uh, chicken and not the pig in that uh, – that pitch right there, he was not committed. At breakfast time, the pig is committed. The chicken is involved. Looks like we've got several members of the uh, Ruelas family checking in, rooting on Seth here on the Facebook broadcast. Just oh. a bit too far outside. I think that one got away from Acevedo <laughs> a little bit, huh? Slipped. Two balls, two strikes. So we've got some Ruelas. Well, if it's just one, is it just Ruella? Oh, here That's we go. a deep drive out of center field. Caught by the center fielder. Going to go with DJ Kaufman, but we might have to check with the trusty binos and make sure that is, in fact, number. We've got a 21. Ooh. That's hey. A little, that's a little taller. Than Lincoln Curtis. 
Tough break for Seth there. That was a good hit, but the center fielder made a good play on it. And a strike to Lane Wright. That's our first outfield caught baseball. Make sure that is. Oh. He's the pig. He's <laughs> he's committed. He took one for the team. <laughs> That's what you want. You want kids that are committed. Teach them to keep their eye on the ball. He kept the whole head on the ball. <laughs> Second hit batter of the game for Acevedo. We got a base runner on here. Catron talking, talking through it with Acevedo here. That is Lincoln Curtis out in center field now. So, want to give him props. We'll put a star by that catch that he made in 10U baseball. Any catch made, especially in the outfield, you got to put a star by that one. No doubt. Bo Erlinson stepped to the plate. How many bombs he got this year? <laughs> Let me consult my stat sheet here. Joey Hale still listening in. He hit the back line as well. Swing and a miss by Bo. He was expecting that breaking pitch to come across the plate, but that was a backup curveball. 72nd pitch of the game for Michael Acevedo. Erlinson's done a little damage at the plate this year, looking to do a little more here. Swing. I think that was on the swing. I believe so. Coach Neal coaching him up here in this two-strike situation. Down in the count, no balls and two strikes. He gets a piece of that one and almost heads up it. over in the Cubs dugout. They almost got the Ass dugout coach assistant, there. Yeah. <laughs> assistant coach stays alive on the 0-2 pitch. On deck, Kingston Felton. Got a piece of that. No, apparently did not get a piece of that. I thought I heard an extra click, but that's exactly what uh, – that's 75. That's what's on the board. That's right. So that is the second out of the inning. Like so Michael Acevedo on. has to uh, come out of this or off the mound. He gets the strikeout. Looks like they're going to call on Ketron here. Jack Ketron. Who's going to come out of shortstop, right? Was yep. it? Yep. He started the game at shortstop. He was at short, yep. And we've got, uh, looks like... Uh, Acevedo is going to go to first and move the first baseman over to short. All right, so Kamani Williams will head to shortstop. There's a Team Edwards member, Jackson Cawthorn, checking in. Goldsville Little League. Let's we'll see this Jackson Cawthorn. He doesn't look at anything at all like hey, – he actually does. He's got a little blonde hair yeah. right there. Can he catch bat left-handed? <laughs> and he hit bombs for Ohio University. I think he's got it in him. The uh, Bobcats. For Jackson Cawthorn, he'll be back for he'll the full back count, really. I believe so, yep. Yeah. That'd be it's awesome. Funny, funny you said that you're not the Jackson Cawthorn I know. <laughs> First time I met the rhythm Jackson Cawthorn, I said, you're not the Jackson Cawthorn I know. <laughs> Appreciate you joining us on Facebook, where the majority of you are. We're also on Twitter, also known as X. And on YouTube, on the YouTube. Not many of you joining us on the YouTube. Let's check Twitter, see if we got anybody. 188. No, that's not it. That was the Hendersonville Rossview High School game that we had. 
188 on. We got a handful watching. We got eight. I'm one of them, so we got seven. <laughs> Sonny Price checking in, voicing the support of the 9 10 Cubs here, trying Rooting to rally for them the all. Cubs. Yeah. Mm. Hoping they can extend a rally here. I think uh, Sonny Price knows a, a young man named Harvey Price. I would, I would suspect. The one-pitch wonder. Yep, there's probably a connection in. there. <laughs> Michael Acevedo finished with five strikeouts unofficially. First pitch in there by Jack Ketron called strike. Ketron and Acevedo, pretty good one-two punch here for the Braves. So two outs, runner at first base. He was plunked in the helmet. Kingston Felton looks at strike two. A good-looking helmet action, though, he has. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another hot hamburger delivered by our one-time scorekeeper who – because he and Dad had to go fishing. Strike three called on the outside corner. Down goes Felton. And the ball game is over? It's time's expired. Time. We can't have time. I mean, there's still there's still light. We still have power here. Eight to three, the Cubs win. As they put five on the board in the fourth inning. They are the home team. So we will not play the bottom of the fifth. Winning pitcher is <laughs> – does that go in the books? Yeah. The winning pitcher is going to be Bauer Beachy. No. That's the wrong team. Michael Acevedo is going to get the win. Yeah, the, cup, the, the Braves even the, this one up. The Braves won the game. Yeah, even So both score. teams now at three and three. This has been fun, Grant. Tim, we appreciate you coming Two out. games. For the Goodlessful Little League. You certainly earned your cheeseburger tonight. <laughs> Two of them. I'm, what time's the park close? I don't think I can get all my gear packed up in time <laughs> and eat two cheeseburgers. <laughs> be, and you know I can't have anybody help me pack up all my gear. But uh, Well, we appreciate, uh, Tim, we appreciate you coming out and broadcasting for us tonight. And uh, appreciate you guys that have joined us through the uh, – Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or have you found us. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it and hope we'll do it again soon. Well, I plan on getting back out here. Going to try to get a 11 and 12 game, but be back on the full count broadcast network on right. Wednesday night, weather permitting. Not, haven't looked at the uh, forecast coming up this week. but Slight chance of rain. Wednesday. Is there on Wednesday night uh, at uh, Pope Prep, John Rypel, the head coach of Pope Prep, the former coach at Vol State and uh, a friend of mine, and we got together and tried to figure out a date that Full Count could broadcast for formerly known team as JP2, now Pope Prep, uh, the Knights. And uh, so we're going to try to get Wednesday and then maybe even next Tuesday out there as I think they take on uh, Innsworth maybe. But they play Brentwood Academy on Wednesday. But I'll be on Vol State Sports Network Tomorrow afternoon as they take on a post-grad team, the Lake Area Academy squad, Fall State Pioneers, my main team in the spring. And then a couple weeks off in May, and then it's back at it for a 56-game schedule with the full count rhythm in the Prospect League. Looking forward to that. But, again, thank you all. Go to the Full Count Rhythm website. Uh, check out the Kids Camp Great time for kids 5 through 12, January, or January, June 10th through 13th, 9 a.m. to noon. It'll be snacks uh, for the kids, T-shirts at the end of the week, and then they'll get to uh, get out on the field on that Thursday night home game at Drake's Creek Park. So go to fullcountrhythm.com. Registration's and, open. And register early and often. So, Timmy. Grant, thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate you. Thank you to uh, – Johnny Garrett, the Goodlesville Little League board president, and uh, Joey Hale, who was up here. Uh, was that just yesterday? I guess we did. That. <laughs> it was just yesterday that I came up here, set all my equipment up uh, at uh, Field 5, and said, you know, this would be fun to do. Let's try to do it tomorrow. So I had to talk them into it. 
but if you want to be a sponsor for Full Count Rhythm uh, on our broadcasts, uh, get an outfield sign. Uh, you can get uh, get a hold of Josh Carmen, Reed Glover over at FullCountMinistries.com, and they will walk you through all of that. Brooke Carmen uh, is uh, she's wearing lots of hats. Uh, please don't let me forget Brooke Carmen uh, in uh, Full Count Ministry. But thank you for uh, watching and listening tonight, everybody on the Full Count Broadcast Network, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Been a blast up here at the Goodlesville Little League to bring you the 10U doubleheader between the Marlins and the Brewers. The Brewers won that first game and the contest here between the Braves and the Cubs. So for board president Johnny Garrett and vice president Grant Edwards and all the folks on the board, this is Tim Reese saying, hey, we got to get to the full count ministries verse of the game first. I'd have it right here, Grant. The verse of the game for game two is in Hebrews 11.6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. That is the full count ministry verse of the game, Hebrews 11.6. Now I'll say goodbye. This is Tim Reese on the Full Count Broadcast Network. We will talk to you again soon. Join me Wednesday night up at Pope Prep. God bless you all. Good night.